So welcome to Chris Gethin YouTube. Looking forward to being a part of this uh, series or this uh, video session today with Mr. Gethin. We haven't trained together for about like, must be like four years or so I should imagine. So be good to be in an environment obviously where we are going to be challenging ourselves a little bit. Both of us obviously experience shoulder instability. So one thing about this video, I want it to be a sense of education as well because a lot of people think there's a misconception out there in order to create positive stimulus and muscle growth and development obviously weight and load is going to be a big part of that however the opposite side of that is that weight and load is irrelevant if that load and that weight is not being applied to that target area the shoulder is a very complex area it's multi functional in a sense and there's obviously a lot of variables or areas which can be weakened in a sense so we've got supraspinatus we've got rotocuff we've got our labrum for me i have a, a partial tear in my labrum on my right hand side so obviously i gonna be very careful of that so one way that we can create more emphasis and load within the muscle is making sure that you're obviously fully engaged neurologically so there's going to be a lot of contractional stimulus taking place and that's all going to start from your mind as well as obviously squeeze and contracting through the movements so what is the plan for this workout I know you said you were going to be instinctual. Yeah, so we're just trying out new pieces of equipment that I feel that's going to be comfortable. Uh, obviously, we've both got injuries. What I notice, if I'm on a machine that just goes straight up or anything like that, it's that lockout that really creates a lot of discomfort for me. So when I'm converging, I feel that I'm getting a little bit more isolation. Because it's like a cross between a press and a fly, but there's still tension at the top without me having to try to lock out. You know, one of the benefits of using a piece of equipment like that, the trouble is there's going to be more vulnerability and your shoulder is going to become more unstable when you're using free weights like a bar or a dumbbell because, you know, gravity, you really want to stay in line with the movement. So if you're pressing, it's a, it's a straight arm position. If you start coming forward with the dumbbell or backwards, obviously you're going to notice it. So your central nervous system is going to sense that. The great thing about a piece of equipment like this, it doesn't just go straight up. It goes up and then it starts to fork forward. So what happens is that your shoulder becomes innocently more stable just because of the movement pattern as opposed to a straight up and down movement. So for instance, if you were to go on to something like a Smith machine, that might be more intrusive on your shoulder. So uh, there's obviously going to be a certain amount of load, which your shoulder is obviously going to have to step up the mark and become more stable as we go heavier and heavier. But we're just trying to get like obviously the movement pattern in line with both of our injuries so uh, the great thing about distinctive training especially because this is the first time chris has trained here we're choosing exercises which, which are going to be more in line with getting the most activation and less aggravated uh, movements perfect so i know what's going to happen today I, ha I really have not trained much in the last like three or four weeks I was in Dubai for six weeks and I trained really hard and my body changed dramatically. I was really shocked when I came back to the US and I looked at myself in the mirror. It was like dramatic changes in six weeks. When I got back about four weeks ago, I really hardly trained. So what's probably gonna happen, I'm not a strong bodybuilder by any means, but I know that I'm gonna to struggle today because I know that I'm, I'm not training fit. So my first set, I might be reasonable with my strength and then I'll probably see a big drop off with my strength on my second set. Now the great thing about that is I know you've obviously maximized muscle exertion and obviously you've really pre-exhausted that, um, that muscle. But one of the benefits of obviously being training fit, so aerobically and anaerobically fit and training fit is that you'll be able to sustain that strength. So indirectly there's gonna be more load transferred. So we'll see how the movements go, see how the workout goes and just play it by ear. So I am super un training fit, so I lost a huge amount of strength then. That strength is gonna come back dramatically if I'm training regular. I've just been very irregular with my training. A lot of people will feel dis disheartened and discouraged when they see a drop off in strength from set to set. 
Now there's a number of reasons why that's going to happen. If when you come to do your second set, you're mentally fatigued, or if they say, for instance, you haven't created a positive sense of like mental clarity and you're not applying yourself enough, then you're obviously going to fail quicker. If you're taking too little rest or you're not recovered enough before you go into your next set, you're obviously going to lose strength. Or if you're untrained and fit, you're going to lose strength. The main thing is, it's not about whether you're maintaining strength, it's what kind of activation you're getting. For, for Chris and myself, obviously, this is Chris's YouTube. I'm not trying to take over and we have very, very similar thought processes. Can't emphasize enough that you can create maximum activation, muscle fiber breakdown and positive muscle fiber um, overload by reducing the weight, but making sure neurologically and contraction you're really engaged with the workout. Does that feel for you now? It's irritable, but let's see. Well, let's see uh, no, 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 no. There's another no. one next to you. Let's see what it feels like once I start going heavier. There's another one right there no, no, as well. I don't I, know I'm, I'm going to put the seat down. And I think, you know, one thing about this is that take the time to set up the machine in line with you, okay? Don't just take for granted that the setup for one person is going to be the same. Your biomechanics are going to be slightly different. Your limb length is going to be slightly different. My area or origin of my shoulder displacement may be different to Chris's. And also when Chris just does done this exercise just now, just to check the movement pattern, remember there was no load. So when you put load on there, you may see an increase in instability. And in some cases, you actually see a decrease. Okay, so we'll see. I'm gonna reduce the seat on the next set and we'll see what it feels like. See, that's a good height for me. Yeah. Yeah, I could see. Are oh, you gonna lift it up a bit more? I'm gonna lower it. Lower it? All oh, yeah. right. See, that would put more strain on my shoulder if I lowered it, I think. Good. Yeah. Entertain us. Yeah, good, perfect. Good set, man, that was a fucking good set. Okay, so when we dropped then, the weight was a little bit light, so I was super responsive with slowing down the negative, so I was able to increase activations, and then you'll be able to force the reps down. Because the problem with high reps on, on a pressing movement on chest, you're gonna get a certain amount of obviously shoulder stability, you wanna keep that stable, but you're gonna get tricep activation so in order to obviously keep that stress and load on your chest, I really reduced the negative. So I've seen, seen an increase in muscle fiber activation. And I keep, keep that chest under tension and take all that load from the secondary muscle groups. Okay, so first guys, it is great for me the opportunity to be here on Chris Gethin's YouTube channel. He's obviously got a wealth of knowledge. His expertise and his uh, attention to detail is certainly, you know, one of the most elevated acclaimed trainers uh, within the world. And he's very, very diverse with his coaching skills as well as what he pushes and preaches. One of the things that I admire about Chris is not just obviously his, his work ethic, but his ability to be open-minded and also work alongside different experts in their chosen fields. And that's something which is a critical element of progression. You know, training or nutrition or supplementation is just one part of a jigsaw. But when you associate yourself and you work alongside uh, experts in their chosen fields, then your wealth of experience and knowledge and what you can pass on and, and bring to you guys and girls at home is obviously much more broad. So today we did what was a freestyle chest workout. So it wasn't any particular exercise that we had uh, chosen before we walked into the gym. The most important thing is obviously I wanted Chris to try the equipment here. 
This is uh, Hidetari Yamagishi and Irish Kyle's gym. It's powerhouse gym here in Las Vegas, which I think has been open for maybe six months. My go-to and my gym that I train is the Dragon Lair, obviously Flex Lewis's facility. So Chris has never trained here before, so I wanted to do something very different. Um, so it was good for us to be in a different environment because this is very new for me as well. So we started off with what would be an incline machine press. So we did four or five working sets. We obviously warmed up. So what we did through all those warm-up sets were obviously priming our central nervous system, getting ourselves accustomed to movement patterns, get some Solovian fluid, blood flow, and then mentally preparing ourselves before we go into our working sets. Now, I'm a big advocate of always working off with your heavier set first within your first working set. And the reason why I do that is because that is indirectly when you're going to be at your strongest. So it kind of makes sense to me to always go with your heaviest working set. However, contradicting that, there is obviously an element of risk or of injury when you're going in with your heaviest weight. So it is good to be able to pyramid up. But if you're pyramiding up with the weight when you're doing your pre, uh, your, your sort of uh, pre warm-up sets you're indirectly priming yourself so the risk is going to be you know dramatically uh, reduced so we start off with the heaviest weight I think we went up to about three and a half plates aside for maybe two or three working sets average rep range was probably maybe 10 to 14 and then we dropped the weight very slightly down to three uh, plates aside for the last two sets right uh, so we went on to the second exercise which again was a seated press it was slightly it was, a, it was a flat press seated upright press but if you change your body composition indirectly going up a higher or lower um, i had my seat position in a lower position which seems a little bit strange because chris is obviously slightly taller than me but i like to sort of use my feet as my platform because in my shoulder i can position myself and force myself up or down and i can find a movement pattern which is going to create more the most amount of emphasis on my chest and keep my shoulder relatively stable uh, and on with that we did the first working set but then we did three drop sets and those drop sets were really productive so it was a bit of a hybrid um, working set that was because we were kind of hitting that failure point nearly at about 14, 15, 16 on the first phase so we're kind of having a crossover of myofibrial and sarcopacific and then we did a drop and we went so, so we went from sort of maybe two and a half plates aside to one and a half plates aside and then what I found with my first drop, it felt a little bit light. So what I did is I really slowed down the negative and really concentrated on the contraction. And I was able to force the repetitions down to keep that rep range at about sort of 12 to 14. But I was able to increase muscle fiber activation and breakdown. So that was really productive. So my point in this is, remember, when you're engaged or you're performing an exercise, be open-minded to know that you can increase the stress and load on the muscle uh, muscle very productively by simply making sure the time under tension and the contractual uh, application through your mind muscle connection is very very high and then we went basically on to our finishing exercise which was cable crossovers it's a different movement pattern it allows you to really engage and open up your chest cavity so it's one of those exercises which is very three-dimensional itself we were sort of hitting the target rep range of maybe 10 to 15 repetitions um, our movement pattern was very, very similar. Um, and that was just a great finishing exercise. So even though we may have only done about 14 sets for chest today, it was very 14 productive sets. There was no reason for us to do any more. Um, and for me, it was a very enjoyable workout, but it also created a lot of stimulus. Today. I, don't, I don't have anything else to say because you're pretty good at this, mate. Hmm. But what I really liked is that we did compound movements first. And as anybody that's been following me, you'll know that I've just been doing isolation, isolation, isolation for the most part because of the tricep and because of the shoulder. So it felt really, really good to use some pieces of equipment that I could do compound movements for a change, you know, because the, the, the majority of the machines that's available to me don't convert, they don't converge. Yeah. They're just straight out, so I can't do that, can't do barbell, can't do dumbbell, I've been keen on barbells anyway. So I've just been doing all isolations. Well, that's pretty much it. So, you know, from us, I hope that it's been a great opportunity to obviously learn something very different. Um, I can't emphasize, obviously, being accountable to something or somebody is very important as well. So if you're looking to really maximize progression, you know, not just within your training, but life goals important. It's important that you're 
accountable to a, uh, to a purpose and somebody who's ever going to be able to help you engage you and know that this is often a great platform for you guys and girls to sign up for his online coach at home. Uh, for myself it's been a great opportunity to spend some quality time with Chris again. Looking forward to the next time we train. I will make sure I'm a little bit more uh, match fit and ready to step up the mark a little bit more. You better, right? mate. You he's better. Going to start carb loading now. Yeah, because he's going to be like Bionic Man when he comes back from Mexico. He's going to be like he's 18 again with his joint, so uh, it's all good, right? All good. Well, thank you very much, brother. I really, really appreciate you. Appreciate the workout and appreciate your friendship, my man. Good stuff. Thank you.